Right, something's just come past earlier that Laurie thought was a motorbike, and I told him it's a lawnmower, and he didn't believe me. So see if you, you'd see through the hill, just appear, and it'll come out. Now we're on the radio mic at the minute, but hopefully you'll be able to hear it still anyway. See? I told you. I told you. That's not a standard exhaust. That's not a standard lawnmower. Can we, can we go play with that? Morning. That, that's like my level of... That's awesome, isn't it? You know what I also need to find? There's a guy in town who's got a Jaguar X-Type. He's turned into a pickup truck and it's got like big like chimneys at the top. I'm not sure if I approve of that. If you've been with this whole series, I want to thank you for getting all the way to the end and I need to explain a bit of a jump in time. In short, I had planned to travel to the south coast to visit one of my sponsors and on the way down there something cropped up which meant that I had to turn around and go back home. So this video begins at Birch Hanger Green service station near Stansted Airport where I was having some lunch and filling up the car so that I had enough electricity to complete my journey home. I know it sounds silly but one thing that does annoy me is the fact that most of the electric cars now certainly the fully electric ones, have the charging socket at the front. Now that means you have to drive forward into the space. I don't like driving forward into spaces, because it means you have to reverse out of them, which is bad. Ooh. Car is 89% after 33 minutes. That's not bad. Now I got a bill through for the last one, which was our uh, fiver. So I'm hit stop charging. Uh, oh, to stop charging, I've heard your app, so I've got to go to the app. And we're gonna get home and then I'm off out tonight to the Kings Lynn Arena or I've been roped into being a judge at a show and shine. Now this little charging session just over half an hour has nearly filled the car but it's cost me six pounds. That's not good that, that's really not good now bear in mind my Alfa Romeo 147 not a super economical car that cost me basically ten pounds pretty much a hundred miles worth of fuel now I already had 30 something miles of range in the tank when I got here so to charge me six quid to bring it up to a hundred well actually it's just cost me the same as filling a fossil fuel vehicle the only difference is that you know I feel superior to everybody else here because I've just paid for a fill up with wind and solar energy but Honestly, I think people are generally quite simple. Most people won't transition to these kind of technologies like they didn't want to transition from old-fashioned light bulbs because they're better or more environmentally friendly. They just want to transition because it's cheaper. Now, the last few days, charging this at home, um, charging it at the Nissan, the various other places, it's cost me little to nothing, which is great and wonderful. And if you can do that, if that's your routine, brilliant. But these ecotricity things, pff, nah, that does a, that is a false economy. If you've got to rely on these, I mean, I'm glad that they're there. However, if I owned an electric vehicle, and I'm increasingly leaning towards that as a realistic proposition, much like I treat the services here uh, for regular fossil fuel, this would be for me an emergency stop only. Now, I'm glad that it's here, yeah, if I'm in trouble, I can fill up, you know, when I've got 33 miles to go home and I've got 34 miles in the tank, I would literally stop here, put five minutes worth of electricity in, and then I'm good. But otherwise, no. Nah. Day six, and I'm on my way down to basically northwest London to film a lovely, lovely Aston Martin. And I didn't charge the car the other night. Um, partly deliberately, actually, um, partly through laziness. But it was... I would have got there on a full tank as it were but I was filming with the car this morning so I've been driving around so I need to charge the car now I use that map to find a fast charging point and I've come here to the Bannatyne Health Club Spa thing uh, which is in Braintree and they've got one of these which is an InstaVault now according to that up there I should be able to charge just by sticking a contactless debit or credit card on it so let's see if that works obviously I'm not going to show you my debit card well, the car is now charging. I am, however, very confused because 
it says 35 pence per kilowatt hour, which is even more expensive than the ecotricity point that I was at yesterday. And honestly, those kind of prices, you can't justify. I'm sorry, you just can't. It makes it far too expensive. People are only going to be lured to EVs because they're cheaper. Some people will do it for the environmental benefit, but that's not why most people will make the switch. However, it also said introductory offer, you will not be billed for charging. So I don't know if that means it's just not going to bill me like a fee for connecting, because some of them do, they charge you like a pound the second you plug in, or whether it means, you know, it should be 35p a kilowatt hour, but it's just not going to bother charging. So I really don't know. I said to you guys at the start, I was going to keep track of how much I've paid, but it's actually been kind of difficult. On the Polar app, it hasn't actually said that I've spent anything on any of the charges that I've made. Now, the only ones I can guarantee I know how much I've spent is the Ecotricity ones, because they did uh, bill me, they did send me invoices through. One was basically £5, one was £6 for a, a bit of juice, so that was very expensive. This one potentially is expensive or not expensive at all, I really don't know. Um, I think, even if I paid for the other Polar ones, because they're a lot cheaper, about 10 pence a kilowatt hour, I would have spent less than £20 uh, for this week, probably doing about 500 to 600 miles in total I'll have done. So it's pretty good, but these are wildly varying prices. I mean, I know that, you know, fossil fuel prices do vary depending on where you go, what kind of fuel you use, etc. But these prices are, you know, by a factor of like three, I've, I've seen price differences here. So that, there needs to be, I think, a greater level of harmony across electricity prices because this has put a lot of people off. It's the day of the royal wedding, and it's what's on the TV, it's what's on the radio, although I must admit most of the radio stations are just getting on with business as usual, which is good, so I'll be listening to my usual selection of 80s music on the way down. Uh, the charge is going quite well, so I'm up to 82% already after only so like 10 or so minutes. I should probably disconnect it soon, as the last 20% do often take a little bit longer. I've got plenty of range to get to where I'm going. So, and actually you can see, when you type in the address, you get this little feature comes up and it shows you the range of the vehicle. So this is where I'm headed. And basically, so you see this green circle and the red circle. So the green is basically, yeah, you'll definitely get there. The red is like, well, maybe you'll get there. And as the car's been charging, so it started off with only being like here and now it's got bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's nice. Um, you got the choice of short or long. Now, one thing that I've noticed with these, now I need to do more research into this to confirm this, so it's just a suspicion at the minute, but I feel like these cars aren't quite as efficient on the motorway or at motorway speeds as they are in town. I think they're the opposite to a fossil fuel vehicle, which is generally most efficient at motorway speeds and far less efficient around town. Certainly, if you're living in town, an EV makes a huge amount of sense, especially if you're living somewhere like London, where you've got loads of charging points and you know, loads of penalties for not having one. But if you're doing a lot of motorway journeys, that's currently the big struggle of the EV. And that's the journey type that I do most. That being said, the car's been doing pretty good. You know, when you're brutally honest and you look at it, even this car with its 100 mile range, a lot of my journeys are, are well under that. So, and especially when you get the fast charging points that you go to, because to be honest, when I've been looking for charging points, I've tried now to only search for fast chargers. I really don't want to spend my time with a slow charger unless it's at home and I know I can leave the car there for quite a long time. So, you know, train stations, places like that, I think you benefit from a good selection of chargers, but certainly uh, fuel stations. And this is one thing I really don't understand. We have a selection of major fuel station providers in this country, you know, Shell, a BP, Esso, uh, Tesco, Sainsbury's. Why have none of them? I know maybe in the case of like Shell and that, it's sort of contrary to their core business, but why can't you start sticking charging points in your fuel stations? Certainly for places like Tesco and Sainsbury's. To me, that would make a lot of sense. You know, Tesco, why can't you put charging stations at your supermarkets? Why can't you put charging stations wherever you put a petrol station? You know, charge people a bit for it. Don't be silly, but just charge people a bit. You'll take away business from people like Ecotricity and these guys. If they want to charge 30, 35p a kilowatt hour, then you know, go and charge like 10, 15, something like that. Like, you know, that seems to me like a good way to make a lot of money. So, and the great thing as well about being a user of an EV in England, 
well, it's a lot smaller country than somewhere like the States, so we can adopt this technology quite rapidly and quite easily, because rea realistically, we don't tend to travel that far. You know, in the USA, 200, 250 mile journey is fairly ordinary. Here, that's a quite a long trip. So that does make a difference too. Well, I'm gonna disconnect now and uh, keep going on. So I tap my card on that to end the session, which is the way it seems to work with these things. And I can confirm, yeah, the whole charge has been free. Completely free. I said it should have cost me £5.53 or something like that, but it's cost me nothing. That's the kind of price I like paying. I just hope that it stays free for quite some time, because otherwise 35p a kilowatt hour is, is a rip. But, free? It's not going to last forever, the whole free charging bit, but I hope that it lasts as long as it can, and it's a good way to encourage people to sign up. I've now finished my assignment for the afternoon, which is the lovely Aston Martin that you see over there. Uh, slight problem though, I thought being in London that there would be a charging station really nearby because I've arrived with 15 miles of range. Now in London, 15 miles is actually quite far, it's basically one side of London to the other. So I thought there'd be a charging point nearby. Uh, not a fast charging point, it's uh, <coughs> eight, yeah, yeah, I know, 8.7 miles. So uh, I'm going to leave eco mode on, and when I get there, I hope it's free. Otherwise, I may be in trouble, but let's see what happens. Also, if this figure here is not accurate, this 50 miles is not accurate, I'm, I'm in serious trouble. But oh, look at how gorgeous that is. That video might be out already, but if it's not, that is a sexy, sexy car. And um, that's not eco-friendly. Oh, God, is it nice. So... Let's get adventuring. And with a healthy nine miles to spare, I found the charging point at the Holiday Inn at Watford Junction. So I'm gonna put like 10 minutes of juice in, which on the fast charge will be plenty. And then that'll get me to Claire's where I will then do a slow charge overnight. Fingers crossed. So my week with an electric car is nearly at an end. In just under 24 hours, a man in a transporter is going to arrive and take this car away. So what's my conclusions? What have I learned this week? Well, it's been a real eye-opener for me. Now, one thing I really, really want to stress and say is that this hasn't really been about reviewing the Kia Soul EV. This has been about reviewing the electric car as a concept. And being able to do this review with this car in particular was quite important because the Soul, in many ways, is reasonably unremarkable. The range isn't particularly good, it isn't particularly expensive, it isn't particularly fancy, it's not loaded down with lots and lots of technology. It's pretty basic as electric cars go. You know, sure, it's a step up from something like a Twizy. You know, you can drive it and go around with it like a normal car, and really, that's probably been the major victory for me. I know it sounds odd or perhaps silly to say, but that's one of the things that really surprised me. When you're not worried about charging it and doing all this, that and the other, it just drives like a car and actually a fairly pleasant one at that. So I know that this is something of an experiment for Kia and honestly, as far as they're concerned, it really isn't going to be a mainstream car. I think they intend to sell something like 200 a year. So they don't plan on it being a runaway success. But I really, really hope that they do keep experimenting with electric cars because, well, this is not bad as first attempts go. How was my key thoughts from the week? Well, range is important. People keep talking about range anxiety and things like that. And I mean, in some ways, I think it's maybe a discussion that's a little bit overdone. Now we're starting to see cars with a more improved range. So the new Nissan Leaf has just come out. That's claiming to do about 170 real world miles on a charge from a modestly priced car. Of course, something like a Tesla is gonna do more like two, 300, but there are of course a lot more money. The truth is though, something like my Subaru only really does about 250 miles to a tank anyway, and I've had several cars like that, so it's not a big issue. Getting used to the whole process of charging the car has been something that, you know, I've had to adapt to in a fairly short space of time, and the people that I speak to, that's been their concern as well. So as an example, I had a chat with my neighbor, he's a fairly old guy, he's in his 60s, and he was asking about the car, and you know, the first question that most people ask, oh, what's the range? I said, well, about 110 miles on a full charge. And he said, oh, well, what if I want to go to Scotland? So I said to him, when have you last driven to Scotland? He said, well, I haven't really. I said, okay, well, 
when do you normally go more than 50 miles? Well, I don't really. So it's like, actually, he's very anti the whole electric car bit, but actually he'd be the perfect person for it because most people have a fairly set routine. I'm actually the worst person to give one of these cars to, which is why I think Kia have been really cool to have done it. I have no routine. I have no plan, no schedule, nothing. I could be going anywhere. You know, I could be going to Edinburgh next week, you know, or I could be going nowhere next week at all. I really don't know. Most people, most ordinary people working normal jobs have a set routine. They know every day, pretty much, they're going to do about, say, 20, 40, 60, 80 miles. And so when you're looking at buying something like this, you can work out, oh, okay, I'm going to go from here in the morning, go to here, come back. You can do whatever you need. And you can plan and you can basically make the car work around that in the same way that people probably already do with their old fossil fuel cars in that you go okay well every four days I need to fill it up and that's how it is and that might be the same way for basically 10 years or so and charging points certainly again where I live charging points fairly infrequent certainly decent ones I am lucky I can charge the car at home but it does take some time I've used a few fast chargers and really the only negative thing that I've encountered was the ecotricity chargers at the motorway services because they're a fortune. I mean seriously they're so expensive. I did actually do the maths and running it was running this was as expensive as running a semi-frugal diesel car. So that uh, ecotricity, I mean come on, you're taking the Mickey. I know everything at motorway services is a bit too expensive, but there's no need to do that. However, I would say this week has been a real success. I am convinced about electric cars. I don't think I'll probably ever bother having a hybrid. I think I'd probably rather just make the switch completely than have a fully electric car to run against my you know, more entertaining and more fun fossil fuel cars. Because again, to be honest, if I'm having a fairly ordinary boring car, I just quite like it to be an electric one. At least they make it really cheap, make it eco, make it all that stuff. Um, actually my energy provider is Ovo, so I have a plan, all my energy at home is actually provided by a mostly, if not all, uh, renewable and sustainable electricity. So that's great. Um, so if you want to, you know, have your conscience cleansed by that, that's kind of the way you need to do it, because obviously there's no point really charging an electric car from like a nuclear power station or something if you want to try and be environmentally friendly. But the tech is improving at a very, very rapid pace. You know, there's a lot of manufacturers now coming to their second generation of electric car. They're improving greatly. The network is building and building and building. Charging it has actually been really, really easy. I mean, that's the one thing I will say about the ecotricity point. You know, I turned up not having a card, not having a plan, nothing like that. All you need is a phone, download the app, do it. Granted, for a lot of older people that aren't particularly tech savvy, the fact that nearly all of these cars rely on some sort of app or something like that, you know, there's, there's a lot of tech involved. So that can put a lot of people off. I understand that, but I think it's been great. So would I buy one of these? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Would I buy an electric car? Absolutely, 100% yes. Is the technology ready for everyone? Not yet. Is everyone ready for the technology? Also, not yet. But you should be, because the electric cars are coming. And you know what? they're quite good. So I'm no longer afraid of this world where all of our internal combustion engine cars are replaced with these because you know what? 99% of all cars sold these days are not that exciting anyway. And if people converting their normal, ordinary, boring cars to electric cars means that those enthusiasts amongst us get to enjoy our petrol engine vehicles that little bit longer, I'm all for that. Thanks for watching this extra long special. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you all soon. Bye bye. So you know how some films, there's always this little funny sequence at the end, you know, just for those that have been really hardcore and stayed till the end. Well, considering this was such a long video, I thought you deserved one of those. I have opened up the donkey sausage. And I'm now gonna have a piece. sausage and hold your phone is really hard. Ooh, big bit of pepper. 
pretty nice. 